Now, if you thought Asus is known for gaming laptops and casual everyday laptops, you couldn't be further from the truth. In all honesty, we don't really care about specs too much. So this is the Asus ProArt 27 inch HDR monitor. If it's your first time here, please consider subscribing. If it's not your first time, welcome back. And smash the like button. You're gonna enjoy this. Now this review is gonna be like my others. It's not all about the specs that you don't need to know about, more about how it is to use, why this is epic, and why it's meant for creators, content creators, filmmakers, photographers, and everyone in the creative industry. So here we go. It's a 2560 by 1440 display. Now, yes, it's 27 inch, it's not 4K, but a lot of people don't like 4K monitors because sometimes they feel it's a little bit too sharp. Now, personally, I love a 4K monitor. However, when you're at 27 inch, 2560 by 1440 and 4K, 5K or a 6K monitor, you really can't see the difference based on the distance that you're sitting away from the monitor. Now with this display, you get 400 nits of brightness, allowing this monitor to receive the official HDR 400 stamp. Now what that means in a nutshell is HDR kind of goes with brightness, but also the way the monitor is designed, allowing it to display different dynamic ranges. In other words, HDR 400 is somewhat what they call the start of HDR. So you can get up to HDR 400, HDR 600, HDR 1000. So this is an HDR 400, but what that means for you is it's at the perfect price point for you to get into HDR. As you know, official HDR monitors are extremely expensive and this is not badly priced. It's an IPS display, which I absolutely love. And most of all, it's pretty much bezel-less and there's no branding. On the bezels which is something i absolutely hate you normally have a slight extra chin due to the company wanting to throw their branding on there however asus pro art didn't really care and that's what makes this thing an absolute pleasure to look at 178 degrees viewing angle you can view it from pretty much any side and whether it's up down left or right the viewing angle is amazing now i know for a lot of creators we don't really care about a viewing angle because we pretty much just sit in front of it. However, if you are using this in a studio, you've connected a camera to it, and it's a viewing screen for some people in a studio, you don't have to worry about them standing slightly off to the side and not getting the correct color accuracy that they should see in a studio. Now it offers real 8-bit. Now what that means is it actually uses a 14-bit internal lookup table to pretty much find all the correct colors even though it's only 8-bit, so you don't get that color banding that you often get and see in monitors. So. A lot of monitors that say they are 8-bit actually are not really 8-bit. They're pretty much doing the same thing that Asus is doing here by using a 14-bit lookup table to create 8-bit. Other monitors aren't even actually really 8-bit. They're just using 8-bit lookup tables to say they are 8-bit. Not all monitors, but some of them. So just keep that in mind. Pretty much it creates a wider color gamut to give you a smooth transition between hues. For a more technical, simplified term. Now this monitor does offer 100% coverage of the sRGB color gamut. So photographers, creators, color graders, this is for you. Every monitor is pre-calibrated by ASUS to get you the correct colors out of the box. So you don't have to double check this monitor to make sure that the colors are accurate. It's correct. Now if you're thinking to yourself, yeah, well I bought a monitor and the colors look pretty good. Not true. These two Dell monitors, when I got them out of the box, and they are 4K monitors, I had to spend so much time trying to get the colors to look correct. And to be quite honest, they're still not 100% accurate. I have trouble with the whites on these monitors. They're just not right. No idea why, I just had to mention that. But this bad boy, oh man, the colors are just perfect. Now I can go on and on about this monitor from a creator side and how it feels to work on it. But a few of the specs that you may want to know, well, here we go. Flicker-free technology, blue light filter for those endless long night editing sessions. It can swivel, tilt, rotate. You can adjust the height. Five milliseconds response time. 95% uniformity compensation. So there's no chroma fluctuations across the screen. So you're not going to get any various patches of different. If you've never seen chroma fluctuations before in a screen. 
don't worry, you're not gonna see it over here. And if you have seen it before and you know how irritating it is, this doesn't have that. It has a somewhat metal feel, it's heavy, it's not ultra thin, and I think it's to pretty much keep that display nice and cool because it is quite a mean display. Then you have the ports. Now the ports on this is probably the coolest part ever. I love ports. I don't know if that comes from me using Macs and not getting enough ports. You know like when you've been deprived of something and you, then you need it. <laughs> yeah, typical Mac user. Now, the ports on this are amazing. You have two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C, one in and one out. You have one HDMI version 2.0A, you have one DisplayPort 1.2, and you have an HDMI version 1.4, two of them. Now, the reason I've mentioned the HDMI port separately, as there are three in total, one of them, however, supports HDR. And obviously the DisplayPort, as well as the Thunderbolt ports, support HDR. So just keep that in mind. Coming from a MacBook, moving to something like this, and I know a lot of laptops actually work this way too. The Asus Zephyrus G14, if I'm not mistaken, also does the same thing, where you can power your laptop with a USB-C port. If you wanna plug your MacBook into this, it is one cable. One cable to power, one cable to transfer picture, and one cable to transfer data. In other words, if you're connecting one of these to the monitor so you don't have to reach for your MacBook, you can transfer data, everything via that one cable. Don't know why every single monitor on the planet is not made like this. It's 2020. We need stuff like this. If you go back to my old monitor setup, you would see that for me to run my monitors on that MacBook, I had so many cables. I think it was four cables connected to it to pretty much do what I'm doing now. So yeah, Asus, you got a winner over here. Now for those that are wondering, it does support picture in picture, picture by picture. Pretty much you can view content from multiple sources on one display, if you need something like that. Personally, I just love a massive monitor, so it's not something that I would use, but if there is for some reason in your creative industry that you do use something like that, it does support it. And for the window users out there, you can obviously daisy chain. For the Mac users out there, Apple, we're still waiting for daisy chain capabilities. So yeah, that's that. Now Asus didn't really skimp on the cables that they give you, whereas most monitors, when you buy them, you generally get a power cable, sometimes an HDMI cable if you're lucky. With Asus, they give you a power cord, HDMI cable, display port cable, and a USB 3 cable. So straight out the box, you can pretty much plug this into any system, MacBook, computer that you have. And obviously you got the usual stuff, you know, your warranty and all of that. And they actually give you the official color calibration testing report for your specific monitor. So you can see everything that you need to know. For us creators though, we care about creating. This is why you pay cool companies like Asus to make perfect monitors. So we don't have to worry about stuff like this because honestly, no creator has time. Thank you, Asus. Now this monitor is currently selling for 19,000 Rand in South Africa. I have looked overseas, so for my overseas viewers, it is going for $1,288 plus minus. I will drop a link in the description below for South African buyers where you can pick this up. And for all my overseas buyers, I'll drop a link in the description where you can pick one of these up as well. Now that's not just it on the monitor. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe because I'm gonna be dropping a color grading video on Final Cut Pro X and show you exactly why color grading with a color calibrated monitor is so important. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Wherever you are in the world, have a good day, good evening, good night, goodbye.